So the Doppler effect. So we first introduce Doppler when we talk about sound, but it also applies to light. So if you look at the way this kind of works, so I saw this interesting thing yesterday. My in-laws are big hunters and, and one of them had a gun, but it wasn't a gun for shooting animals. It was a gun for shooting out strips of jerky. You fill this thing full of like deer meat or elk meat or whatever animal you happen to have hunted and, and it shoots out pieces of beef jerky. And I, I wasn't really quite sure what it was. I just saw the picture and they were trying to tell me it was a jerky gun. And I'm like, a jerky gun? They're like, yeah, it shoots jerky. And I'm just like, okay. And I'm envisioning like pieces of beef jerky flying across the room at people or something. I'm like, okay. So obviously that's not what it's for, but that's what I envisioned. So let's say I decided to shoot you, Caleb, with a jerky gun. And I'm shooting pieces of beef jerky at you at a frequency of one per second. And so as long as you sit there and I stay here, you're gonna get hit with a frequency of one piece of beef jerky per second. But if you really like beef jerky, you may just run at me. And so if you run at me, then each successive piece of beef jerky has to travel a smaller distance to reach you. And so instead of getting hit in one per second, you're gonna hit, get hit faster than one per second. And so it worked the same way if I was running at you and you were staying still, or if we were just both running at each other. And so when two objects are moving to it, towards each other relatively, the frequency which, which they get hit with beef jerky goes up. So in this case with light waves, same thing happens. If two objects are moving towards each other, then the frequency of the light gives the appearance of being higher than the actual emitted frequency. So the frequency that is observed is actually higher than the emitted frequency from the source. On the other hand, if Caleb here does not like getting hit with beef jerky and runs away from me. Now each successive piece of beef jerky I shoot his direction, is gonna take longer to reach him because each one has to travel a further and further and further distance. And so he's gonna get hit with a frequency that's less than one per second. So, and that's kind of what this equation here summarizes. <clears throat> so here the observed frequency is equal to the original emitted frequency from the source times one plus u over c here, where u is the relative velocity between the observer and the source, and c is the speed of light. And this equation really only works if the speed traveled is a lot less than the speed of light, just FYI. And so in this case, this is you know, kind of what we use to look at stars and stuff like that. And so if you look at question number three, kind of take a look. If a star is moving away from the Earth with, with a velocity of 3.0 times 10 to the sixth meters per second. That's you. So the observer, some of us on Earth, and this star have a relative velocity moving apart 3.0 times 10 to the sixth meters per second. That's you. And in this case, we are asked, by what percentage will the observed frequency of light be different than the actual emitted frequency? So, and will it be an increase or a decrease in frequency? So in this case, are we gonna observe this star, the frequency of light coming off it, as being a higher frequency or a lower frequency than the actual emitted frequency by that star? So first of all, again, is the star moving towards the Earth or away from the Earth? Away. Away, and so just like with the beef jerky gun and Caleb running away, so what happens to the frequency or how frequently goes decrease? So in this case, we gotta figure out the percentage here that it's gonna decrease. And if you look at this equation, we got frequency observed equals the frequency of the source times one, we'll leave the sign out for a second, but 3.0 times 10 to the sixth over the speed of light, 3.0 times 10 to the eighth. And plus or minus, the plus or minus depends on if the objects are moving towards each other or away from each other. So if they were moving towards each other, the frequency would go up and I need to add here so that the observed frequency would come out higher than the frequency emitted by the source. But in this case, since they're moving apart, I'll subtract. That way the observed frequency is lower. And in this case, what's 3.0 times 10 to the sixth over 3.0 times 10 to the eighth? What is it? Yeah, 0 0.01. And so this ends up being one minus 0 0.01, or frequency observed equals frequency of the source times 0.99. And so in this case, we already predicted it was a decrease, and by what percent was it a decrease? A 1% decrease, cool. 
That's the Doppler effect as applied to light. This is how we know that the majority of stars in the universe are moving away from the planet Earth. This is kind of why we think, you know, part of the reasoning for why we think the entire universe is expanding, because everywhere we look, everything's moving away from the Earth, and that would jive well with an expanding universe.